Introducing Open Web UI, formerly known as Olama Web UI. What makes this one special? When you click to download Open Web UI, you'll see their GitHub page where you can explore the project. Let's start by looking at its functionalities and features within this Web UI system. As you can see, you can interact with images, generating them on the fly. This web UI is not only ideal for large language models and text generation, but also allows you to create AI agents, directly embed content, and enjoy robust support. You can also perform web browsing within this open web UI system without needing any external features to enable your large language models to search online or browse web data. Many of these large language models are available for download using Olama. So you can update your Olama models directly in here and download supported models as well. And that means everything works locally on your computer. If you don't want to run or connect any data online, you can simply turn off your internet and run everything locally on your computer. One of the cool things this system allows is collaborative chat, which isn't currently available in ChatGPT or OpenAI. The Open Web UI also supports voice input and text-to-speech endpoints, so you can talk to the AI like Tony Stark did in the movies, he talked to Jarvis, and the AI responded by talking back to him. And one of the most attractive features for me is that it's able to connect to any diffusion models such as Automatic 11. 11 API, Comfy UI, locally, and of course, via OpenAI API connection to DALI. Meanwhile, this system isn't just limited to using text prompts and generating text. You can use natural language interactions like chatting and ask the AI to generate an image or perform some tasks within the workflow of the Comfy UI. And so, this is a really great AI assistant or established whole system on your local machine. You can work with downloaded large language models in your computer using Olama and enjoy multi-user management support as well as webhook compatibility with Microsoft Teams and Google Chat for real-time notifications if you want to. In essence, everything from your computers or any third-party APIs is able to work seamlessly within this open web UI system. You're also able to interact with data by playing around with it. So let's check out how to install this. If you have previous versions of Olama Web UI, you'll need to upgrade your existing one to the Open Web UI. And if you have Docker, which of course is a better way to install this, as they've mentioned here, you can use this command prompt and run it within your local host installation. So here are some scenarios. So, if you already have Olama on your computer, then you can run this prompt using Docker to install the Open Web UI locally. And if you're running Olama on a different server, such as a web server or another computer, and you want to run the Web UI with other computers or the one you're currently using, then you'll need to run this command prompt to kickstart the Open Web UI. Just run this command prompt and you'll be ready to go enabling GPU processing for large language models and interactions with diffusion models, etc. Also, this is the installation command prompt for OpenAPIs or OpenAI APIs usage. If you have ChatGPT, for example, and want to keep using it, that's fine. Then, you just need to input your secret key and API key in here, and you'll be ready to go with OpenAI data. One of the easiest ways if you're brand new and haven't installed Olama before, is to install the Open Web UI and bundle Olama with one package. This is the GPU supported version that just runs this command prompt, allowing you to install both things together while enabling your GPU. And if you only have a CPU in your computer, I don't recommend this, but you can still run it using only your CPU. So let's get started with how to play around with this. You guys can check out all these command prompts and choose the one that suits your installation scenario. But for my installation, I already have Olama, so I'll do the first one, just installing the web UI on top of my existing Olama. I'll copy this and head to the command prompt to install it. Then I'll come back later. The first step we need to take is to install Docker. If you don't have it, then you'll need to go ahead and install Docker. My version is the Windows version. 
So after enabling the Docker engine, I'll go to my command prompt, paste that installation command, and it will start pulling all the files and installations for you here. Just be patient and wait for that to finish and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so once you've finished your download process and installations of Open Web UI, you'll see everything goes smoothly and says, create a new image here. Then you can close this command prompt off and it will pop up a new instant container in your Docker desktop. You click over here and you'll see the Open Web UI downloaded and running. So please check that the state is running. If it's not, then you need to click the run button here. But now, once I've clicked run, it will change to a pause, restart, or stop button, just like a typical server does. You can see the image. This is not a photo image. It's actually a drive image of the open web UI. So virtually, this is installed in my local computer using 3.3 gigabytes. That's almost four gigabytes used to run this. And the volumes up here are like the local hard disk of your virtual machines or any instance running in Docker. Then, once you check everything is in use and running, the state should be running. You can start using this by clicking into here, 3000, and the port number is 8080. You can click here to redirect yourself to the local host and start at the signup page here. So let's click to full screen on this web browser once we're in the signup page of Open Web UI. Now this is not connecting to an Open Web UI server or any third party server. The signup data, login, and everything are stored in your local machine, which is where you just installed your Open Web UI in the Docker container. So everything is stored locally. So for example, I have to create something, create my account here. Once I sign up and it redirects me to the first initialize page of Open Web UI, it will pop up this modern pop-up dialog and show all the changes, bug fixes, and updates of Open Web UI right now. So, let's click OK and start playing around with that. And for the rest white color themes, you can, I believe you can, yes. Do our dark themes like that or the old LED dark, it's even better. Then click save and it will be more suitable for your eyes reading and things like that. So once again, please remember to check your local computer to see if you have already running Olama before you run Open Web UI. For Windows, you can go to check your Olama, which will pop up in the taskbar. You'll see the Olama icon. Right click here. As you can see, I'm running that already so I don't need to touch anything and we can go back to the web UI. Once you connect everything properly, it will show by default the Olama installed large language model. So Olama will be connected automatically once the web UI boots up in the Docker container. So as in my examples here, I have four large language models installed in my local machines in my Olama installations. So I got four of these and let's check it out. Let's say I use El Llama to see if that is really cool for, you know, making image interactions in the chat. So by default, you have to select one of these large language models and start typing in here, the chat bot. And let's say, hi, who is this? Okay, so it shows me this is Bing, a language model developed by Microsoft. Okay, so let's try something more fun because Lava are able to read through an image. It has clip visions features, so we can upload an image here and now try something cool. So let's try a knife here. Let's attach this image and ask, what is this? Okay, so it does able to tell me what is contained in this image. I would say 50% right from the answer. So the image shows a knife dark finish, black handles possible made of wood. However, the fact knife is correct, but the handle is not, as I know because the Bastinelli knife are using G10 handle. Oh well, that's fine. Cause the AI are only give a very general answer, it cannot define what kind of material from the image. But maybe large language models are going through the wooden color on the side, so it's going to become what it is just by briefly looking at the output of that.
So let's go to model files and for the model files sections in here, you can create your own special purpose response AI, especially for you. For example, you want to do a copywriter for an advertisement. You want to make a paragraph for your advertising script. Then you can specify a large language model to create that for you. So you can customize our models for the specific purpose in here. For example, I click this, create a model files, and it's able to do a pre-prompting in here and tell the AI the descriptions and what models are using the prompt suggestions and what kind of categories of this modifier. So this is going to be like, like what you see in some specified prompts. I should say pre-prompting the AI what to respond before you start chatting with the AI. So in here, for example, I am doing writing. So let's give it a name. So it's Jack, the content creator of the content writer. The model tag name are going to be Jack, the content creator. It automatically generates for me. I don't have to type it myself. And the descriptions of this model files are going to be basically, it is going to be just tell block writer for tech blog called the future thinker. The blog is discovering latest AI trends. Okay. And from the content in here, so from love. So as you can see in here, you can click the raw format. It can go from the models as well. I like this way because you can choose which models are using this model files. For example, I have Llama 3, so I can specify a base model. So I'm using Llama 3 system prompts. That is what we have predefined the prompt before we start to chat with the AI. So let's say this is a blog writer AI assistance for a blog, thefuturethinker.org. It will receive a topic and go online, search for relative information, and write a blog post about it. He is a native English speaker, professional writer. So that's it. So very basic, simple way to do a system prompt pretext. What is this character doing? And you know what? What kind of things are going to be in here? So prompt suggestions in the prompts. Here you can say, this is Jack. So there you go. So everything are just very simple, basic, and you click save and create and you are going to have your own modified primer or modify AI using this one. And there's a lot of other model files that you can use in the open web UI community. You can click this and once you click that button, and obviously it is redirect to open web UI on official site, you can go browse around. There are a lot of other model files, AI agent in here. So for example, I like this one, the multi agents. This is really cool things. So from Elama 2, and then the system from everything in here are, you know, can be just copy and paste that into your setup. Create prompts from here. So it's very easy. You can, you know, get your own local large language models to work for you as an AI agent using this method as well. So as you can see in here, you can click the raw format. It can go from the models as well. I like this way because you can choose which models are using this modifier. And check it out on this one the modifiers and then the prompts in here are also some predefined prompts that maybe you're having like a set of templates you can use that in this example again you can go to the official site and it's right here there's an official site for the prompt sections in here so for examples like this one we can do a translate so this is a prompt content so what it means is that we have a predefined prompt template that is going to be using for language translations and we can create our own in here. So let's say, let's use that one. Let's use the translate expert as an example. We can copy this prompt content, paste that into here. And once we're done and we give it a name as well, of course, we are going to call it language translate expert and click save. And there you go. You have your language translate prompts as a template and you know you can share with your friends or delete that and modify that. You know all this admin configuration icon on the side of this table and the document section in here when you click on the left. Let's dive into the exciting part. I find this feature incredibly useful and practical because it allows you to leverage your own documents including PDFs, text files, and Word files. By building a knowledge base on top of our powerful large language models, you can unlock new possibilities for running specific tasks. Whether you're mapping out documents or importing information, the possibilities are endless. 
But one thing that you can do is click the document settings. You can click general in here. Then going to this section, you can do the embedding models engine. So that will be by default using the transformer. You can use Olama and or using OpenAI embedding. And once you've done this, the documents are going to save in the data subfolder and the subfolder called docs. So you can put those text files, PDF, Excel, whatever knowledgeable documents that you have, you want to create an embedding factor database. You can put all those in the document folders and click scan. And once you've clicked scan, the open web UI are going to base on your content and build an embedding database for you. And then there's a factor database. I should say the factor database are going to build based on the embedding models. It will be running that locally in your computer so you can build a rack template as well. There's a lot of things going on. I just have, you know, generally go through everything in these videos. And for the search, this is only for typing any keywords to find things that are happening in your chat history. So in here, we can always go back to our previous history. You don't have to click new chat. You can go to today's and say, who is calling? So this is my previous history. So let's go, let's try new things. Maybe we can do a grammar check or explain option trade simple and stuff like that. We can do this one for finance. Again, always have to select and models for your new chat because you can do multiple large language models in the open web UI since I have, or you guys can download multiple large language models in Olama. So let's say I use El Alama, three this time and do this finance related chat and let's see what is going to respond me okay so it's showing all the stock of options trading how it buys and sells in stocks the familiar way to do in the stock market and buy a stock like with the difference of options so call and put so it makes sense you know the ai does know about the knowledge of call and put in options and then buy a call options or buy a pull options explain that in the freeway and you guys can you know learn a lot with that or if you have documents already embedded as a factor database you can you know do more better with more knowledgeable with your finance chat with your ai that will be a way better way to do that so there's a lot of features and functions you can play around with you know this chat history like image generation this is the most exciting things i'm going to try out maybe on the next video I am going to using the open web UI and build a vector database with Olama for demo. And yeah, try it out guys. This is called the open web UI. So I will see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.